welcome back to another video. Today is going to be all about how to go back to your old Genshin account that might have been abandoned. Don't worry because a lot of people have the same problem and I have a lot of people asking me what do they do because they have been affected by the Genshin burnout and don't know how to get back to their account without being so stressed. Don't worry, this video is all for you, so I hope you enjoy and let's get started. So usually when you take a break from your account for a really long time, there's going to be an event pop up for you. I don't have it right now, but it is a welcoming event or sort of an event where it gets you back on track and gives you prima gems and kind of helps you with all the stuff you've missed. I have this one. I don't have a picture of it right now, but I'll put it up on screen. And basically what that does is it tries to get you back on track and allows you to play with getting some rewards and not having to worry about all the stuff you've missed. So for this one, it is pretty helpful, although it does kind of tell you you have to log back in every day and it can be really lengthy, especially if that's not according to your schedule, like you don't have time to play every day. So that's the kind of issue that I saw when using that one. But a really good way to get back on track, especially with the lore and the story quest, is to begin with all the quests you have. Now this can be really, really overwhelming and honestly can be also boring too because I don't want to sit through all this dialogue but a good way to start is through the Archon quests and forget about the world quests for now because some of them are kind of irrelevant especially stuff that's just really complicated like the Aranara quest I haven't even completed it because of how lengthy it was and it just wasn't exciting so I suggest doing the main Archon quest and if things like this happen then I suggest completing these types of quests first but if you are able to go through the Archon quest it's a good way to be able to understand the story without having to do lots of lore catch up and also it's just an easy way to go back into everything you don't have to grind on the first day back because you just have to listen to dialogue or you can even skip it if it's not really that interesting to you another thing you should do if you're not really that interested in the lore or don't really care about the quests you can always start by looking where you left off so what i'd like to do is go through all my characters and then find out who was i building at the time now for me i had to go back to building hu tao and yelan however i do suggest doing quests first because sometimes you need to unlock certain domains and certain things for these characters Characters. So make sure you go ahead and check out what's needed before you start building and then realize you need a domain that's in a long quest and you kind of just wasted your time. So make sure you do the quest first. So once you've looked at where you need to start off, for example, for me, that would be Yelan's artifacts. I want to get a proper four piece emblem. So that means I would go farm in that domain. Usually when you get back, you have full resin. So that means you're able to do the domain that you need and you don't have to waste all that resin on something else. Make sure you always know what you're looking for like if you need to ascend a character do that domain or do that boss or anything like that because that will help you instead of wasting your resin it might be kind of tricky especially if you're in that really late game phase where you have just raised everybody and you don't exactly have one single goal you can always start out by doing abyss with your characters but going right into abyss especially after such a long break can be pretty overwhelming especially if you've never seen the abyss enemies before and if it's really really new to you that's why i suggest doing the quests the next thing you'll also want to do is the daily commissions. These daily commissions give you some Prima gems and lots of XP and materials. So if you came back to your account and you're basically broke and don't have any Prima gems, don't have any Mora or weapon enhancement ores, doing commissions are a really good place to start. Commissions are easy, I'm sure you can fight them really quickly, and it won't be that difficult, especially when you're just coming back, because it's not overwhelming and it's kind of a leisurely thing you used to do if you played a lot in Genshin before. You're also going to want to claim expedition rewards and go to the foraging place and all that sort of stuff. In the meantime, you can also claim the battle pass stuff, but don't farm the battle pass because sometimes it's just a waste of your time if you want to farm the battle pass. But if you do end up claiming something from the battle pass, then claim those rewards like your four commissions and mining items and all that stuff. If you're coming back to your account and you don't really have lots of time, if you have characters on an expedition, I suggest claiming those rewards first. If you don't have enough time to do commissions, that's totally fine. Just do the stuff you're able to do within that time. Um, I accidentally started a quest. What did I just do? Anyways, let's get back to when I'm actually able to do stuff. I should never have teleported to Inazuma. So back to what I was saying, when you come back, usually there's a lot of events going on. So in that case, do the events first because that's a really good way to get easy Prima Gems. And the majority of Prima Gems anyways come from events. Like if you ask me where I get a lot of my Prima Gems from, and it's just from doing events and participating in them. So what you're gonna want to do is complete these events first before you do all the other stuff that can take any amount of time. Like for example, this event only has one day left. So that means I will want to prioritize this because there's very little time left for me to 
do it but i can do the world quests and stuff at any time i really want to so what i mean by events are the actual events where you can gain these prima gems like it says here possible rewards and stuff like this but you can also do the test run it gives you some prima gems too i haven't done those yet but events like these that are just exploration you can skip these because exploration is another whole topic that i'm going to discuss in a little bit i suggest just skipping these for now and focusing on exploration a little bit later it's not exactly a priority that i would do when i got right back into genshin unless it's a new area like there's an update where i really wanted to explore i would do it from my personal experience going back in and doing exploration is a really overwhelming thing especially if you don't really have someone to do it with because it's kind of lengthy and it's a very boring task so exploration just hold back on it for now so another tip that i really have to mention is do not rush when you're getting just back into Genshin because there is obviously a reason why you had to stop playing Genshin and a lot of the time that's just because of burnout. Now it's totally fine to take a break but then the thing about Genshin is that when you come back you have so much to do and it feels so overwhelming and you don't really like to play as much as you did before. Now I had this issue but then I realized that if I just play Genshin slowly and not worry about all the rewards and stuff I'm able to have a lot more fun with it. So in this case I don't play Genshin every single evening like like I used to and I play less frequently. So if you are having trouble keeping your Genshin life balanced with your everyday life, like if you're a student or if you have another job and you cannot play Genshin every day, I suggest creating a schedule and making it very clear when you can play. So for example, if you're in school for the beginning half of the day and you don't have lots of work in the evening, you can play for about an hour or it really depends on how much time you have. That's what I used to do a lot and it really helped having this special time to play Genshin instead of just saying, oh I'll play Genshin and I'll just have fun because usually I lose track of time and it's really hard to actually get back and do what I'm supposed to do. Also, when you have a limited amount of time, you're more efficient and you just don't spend time wandering around and doing stuff that's actually not really that important. So by creating a schedule, you're able to monitor your time for Genshin and you won't be spending time on useless things. I used to do that a lot before and I would have such a hard time being able to control what I'm doing and eventually made my farming time pretty useless and I wasted a lot of time in the past if I didn't create a schedule. Now sometimes schedules might not be for everybody, like you'll just like to go with the flow or you have a lot more time on your hands, but at least by having a basic outline of the things you want to complete, even a to-do list really works as well because you're able to set your mind to those things that you want to accomplish rather than just being overwhelmed right on the first day you return to your old abandoned Genshin account. You know this scene right here? I really like taking pictures here. Highly recommend. Okay, now for the last thing, which is something that should really be mentioned because of how overwhelming it honestly is, and that is exploration. So I have exploration 100% in pretty much most of Inazuma except for Surumi Island. Same for Liwe and Mondstadt and Dragonspine, but then you look over at Sumeru and things are kind of all over the place. Now I really want to go back and explore and use the interactive map and everything, but the thing that I don't feel like everyone talks about is the new mechanisms and getting used to how everything works. So it can be really tricky. So what I suggest is using the interactive map and going location by location. So let's say you wanted to dedicate a whole day of exploration to just the chasm. So what I would do is I would stay within this chasm boundary right here, like I wouldn't go into this part of Sumeru or I wouldn't go into Liwe, but I would make maintain myself in the chasm and then I would check off all the exploration mechanisms and chests and everything like that on the interactive map. If you don't exactly know what I'm talking about, just search up Genshin interactive map and it's just a way to mark off the chests and stuff that you've already collected so that you don't go back and have to use that treasure compass all over again because the treasure compass can be very intimidating because it just leads you to random chests through walls and especially if you're going underground in the chasm and there's all these levels and everything like that that it's just so annoying to explore or if it's a place that you've never explored before and you don't have the map unlocked if you want to unlock a teleport waypoint or unlock a statue of the seven i really suggest looking at the interactive map and not just winging it and going through the fields and stuff because if you follow the path eventually it will lead you to the waypoint or it will lead you to the statue of the seven or anything like that but if you're not looking at a map and you're just exploring for the first time it's really really tricky so for exploration definitely do not rush exploration and if you see a world 
health quest or you see one of those people in need of help you can either do two things one you can mark it down on your map and then say here's a world quest like do this later or you can start the world quest but don't continue it so just start the world quest so that it shows up in your quest bar right here but don't finish the world quest because then you're eventually just going to be doing that for a really long time and then once you have all your world quests stacked up here you'll be able to conquer them one by one later on that's what i used to do a lot in the chasm and especially in inazuma when i just explored it for the first time and it really helps a lot because it organizes what you have to do and it also shows you where so by using all those tips together it makes exploration a lot more fun and less tedious and if you have a friend that you want to go around with you can do that definitely because it's really more fun when you have someone else to be with and in the moment and it's all really really interesting and it's pretty cool unlocking things for the first time especially with friends you're experiencing a lot of the places for the first time okay now enough about that just a reminder if you're going to be exploring with friends the first thing i suggest doing in your own world before joining in co-op is making sure you have the statue of the sevens unlocked because the statue of the sevens you cannot unlock if you are in a co-op game you're gonna need to log out of co-op and then back in again and everything like that so i really suggest unlocking all the statues first and then doing all the waypoints with your friends and stuff it really helps a lot especially with navigation because it's one thing if you don't know where you're going but it's another thing when two people are endlessly wandering the map so those are my main tips for coming back to a Genshin account that was abandoned for a really long time. Hopefully it helps you and if this motivates you to play Genshin, that's amazing. I remember I had such a hard time going back to Genshin because of all the stuff that was waiting for me. So I really hope this helps and best of luck on your Genshin journey. So I hope you have a wonderful day and good luck on your polls and I'll see you in the next video.